I'm Steve Gatormson, Director of Pioneer Care Foundation. I'd like to thank you for joining us and also thank our friends for their support through their prayers, through volunteerism, and through monetary support of the Pioneer Care Foundation. I'd like to share a little bit about where we are today. Pioneer Care continues to serve about 800 people on any given day. Many live within our living settings, including Pioneer Care Center, Pioneer Cottages, and Pioneer Point. Hundreds are also supported through Pioneer Link, and those people are spread out over Otter Tail County and eight to 10 other counties around us. When I think about the people that Pioneer Care supports, I think about an artist who lives here and continues to produce hand-painted pottery. She always has at least one piece in progress. I think about a lifelong learner who connects online to read and research the things that are interesting to her and the others who have been challenged with technology and learning new ways to connect with others. These people are leading enriching lives, yet they are medically vulnerable. And never in our collective memory has protecting our most vulnerable been more important and intentional than it is today. Pandemic conditions have challenged each of us. There is no playbook to guide us through it, but I'll tell you this, we are writing it together. And while that plan is adaptable as conditions change, and it is clear, realistic, and positive in its approach. As an organization that has served the community for over 90 years, Pioneer Care has gone through difficult spots before. And together, we'll get through this time as well. We have guests here with us today. Not one, but two John Quellos, whose family relationship goes back to an assembled meeting in the basement of a church right here in Fergus Falls back in 1926. Hello, I am John Quello, and I think I've got a really fun project today. I am planning to talk about two generations before me to my grandson who is two generations behind me. And in those five generations, the pioneer homes were thought about created and have grown into an incredible organization serving and caring for the needs of the people here in Fergus Falls and the Fergus Falls area. And so I have with me my 11-year-old grandson, John Anders Quello, which is J.A. Quello, and he would be the fifth generation from Julius Anders Quello, J.A. Quello, who was really the person that started the idea of the Pioneer Memorial Home. And I find it a most interesting coincidence that five generations later, there is a J.A. Quello, and this was the first J.A. Quello. Wow. This was his confirmation picture, and I think he bears a resemblance to you. You're 11 here, he's 15. But he grew up to become a Lutheran minister, and one of his calls then came to Bethlehem Lutheran Church in Fergus Falls. And we're going to talk a little bit about your ancestry, those grandparents, but why don't we first let these people learn a little bit about you. You are John Anders Quello, and tell us a little bit about you. Um, I am going into sixth grade. I'm from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I am going to be in, as I already said, in sixth grade, but honors in sixth grade, Spanish immersion. So he can carry on a conversation in Spanish very, very fluently. And I think that's also interesting with his heritage because his grandparents and great-grandparents could speak fluently in both Norwegian and English. And Johnny is fluent in Spanish and English. I think, John, what I would like to do is talk to you and we'll, I'm just going to show you this because this is your paternal 
grandparent ancestry. And you are at the top, John Anders Quello at 11. Underneath you is your dad at age 47. Then it's me, oof, hate to say it, 76. And then my dad, Julius Norheim Quello, 110. And Julius Anders Quello, 145. And then his father was Anders Anderson, who would be 187. <sighs> Anders Andersen came to this country from Norway in 1871 and homesteaded eight miles north of Fergus Falls and we drove by there this morning and I showed you where he built the earth home yeah. that J.A. Quello was born in in 1875. From that beginning J.A. Quello then went through school and the seminary, studied in Norwegian, preached in Norwegian, and ended up being a pastor here in Fergus Falls at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Wow. One of the things that I think was interesting about his ministry was one of his calls was to a church in Chicago. And in that church, one of his confirmants was Knut Rockney. And you probably don't know him, but Knut Rockney was a famous Notre Dame football player and became the coach, the head coach of the Notre Dame football oh, wow. program and was very famous there. And your great, great grandpa was his confirmation teacher. Your great, great grandfather, early in his ministry, he went to Beresford, South Dakota you remember in Beresford, South Dakota, when we went and saw the cemetery where your great, great, great grandfather was buried? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And that's where the nursing home was in Beresford. When my grandpa was the pastor there, he was the pastor of three churches, ran the orphanage, and built the nursing home. And then uh, all of that in, was a part of his job in Beresford, uh, South Dakota. And it was there, I'm sure, where the idea for the Pioneer Home came into his mind that the church needed to be a place that would build places for older people to live. In those days, they called them Old People's Home, I think is what they called the one in Beresford. <laughs> Isn't that funny? The Bethesda Old People's Home. That's just kind of like saying wet lake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that was uh, a big part of what he did in Beresford. And that rest home in Beresford was built in 1914. And then he came eventually to Fergus Falls and started this pioneer home here in 1926. That's really old. That is really old. <laughs> what is that? How many years ago was 1926? It was like 94. Yeah, 94 years ago. And they actually built it 92 years ago. Tell me this. Can you imagine being a pastor in a church and getting up for the first service and having to do everything in Norwegian and then have the next service two hours later and have to do the same thing all in English. I can't do that. That's the way they did it back in those days because they had everything in both languages. Wow, so, that would be really hard. Yeah, it would be hard. One of the other things that happened when J.A. Quello was the pastor at Bethlehem Lutheran Church they voted to allow women to have a vote in 1932. Can you imagine living in a world where the women had no vote? No. Like, that's, that, I mean, it just sounds weird, but I know it happened in history. It's just yeah. odd that some of those things have happened. Yeah. 
And then my dad, who then grew up here in Fergus Falls, was a real good basketball player for the Fergus Falls Otters. What sports are you into? Um, I'm into tennis, golf, um, quite a few of those similar things. And when you're at the lake? I do a bit of swimming. Fishing? Fishing. When we were I fishing... I fishing is a sport. When we were fishing the last time you were here, you threw the pole in how many times or the... Oh yeah, I threw the line in like five times and caught like four fish. Four fish and five casts. It was a pretty good day for sure. And when we came here, we drove by where your great, great, great grandfather homesteaded and that was next to Fish Lake. Yeah. And we thought that was an appropriately named lake, you know, for him. But the important work that the Pioneer Home does in caring for people as they age and um, need care yeah. is something that is really important and it's been important from the beginning. There was a ladies group that was started the year after the Pioneer Home was opened in 1928 and they met every month to do a project to make something for the home. But they had dues to be a part of that. Do you know what the dues were? What? Oh. 15 cents a month or a dollar 80 for the year. Isn't that something? So they'd get paid a dollar and 80 cents for a year? They paid a dollar and 80 oh. cents to go to the Pioneer Home to help out. And in those days, that was a helpful amount of money that would help the Pioneer Home pay for things and do things for the people that were there. It's funny today. It is funny, isn't <laughs> Nowadays, it? that's just like... A drop in the bucket, yeah. Or like you go to the, to like a general store or something. Yeah. It's like a piece of candy. Right. And then that was a good, helpful amount of money. That was a helpful amount of money back then. And uh, one of the things that the Pioneer Home does this time of the year every year is ask people who are supporters of the home to make a donation. And so that tradition continues and has continued for 92 years where people are asked to support and care for the work that the Pioneer Homes do. Wow. And that's the work that your great, great grandfather started. Wow. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say. We wish the Pioneer Homes really well and hope that things go well for them, don't we? Yes. We thank you for sharing in our conversation about five generations of the Quello family that have been involved and cared about the Pioneer Homes. From J.A. Quello that had the meeting that started the organization to J.A. Quello here who is 11 years old and is learning about that history and who joins me in inviting all of you to support the great work that is done here at the Pioneer Home. Bridging on John's lesson of the $1.80 a year annual support for Pioneer Care Foundation over a hundred years ago by those who believed Pioneer's mission and purpose, I hope you will consider the rate of inflation since then, and the added need we have today. And join us with a financial gift to Pioneer Care Foundation. Your gift in any amount helps support the lifelong artist or the lifelong learner and the hundreds of others who depend on Pioneer. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe and well. Thank you.